Hi there folks, it's Steve from Azimuth Images. We're going to look at today horizons and verticals. If you're going to sell your work and uh, vested interest here, I am one of the co-founders of Lens to Print. There will be a link on the screen and in the description, I promise you. Then you really need to have your horizons as horizons and you need to have your verticals as verticals. And sometimes it's really hard to sell. A landscape, if there's no flat line, is quite forgiving sometimes. But if we have a big, wide open expanse of sea, as we have on the image on the screen now, well, there's really no excuse. It should be horizontal. And our human eyes are quite forgiving. We can look at something and think that looks lovely. And other than a slight zoom factor here, if I move between the three images, so the one there, and this one, and this one, uh, they all look pretty much the same and quite forgiving. But let's be a little more precise. This image here has been corrected and we can check for a horizon by zooming in and putting a line across the sea meets the air. We can go zoom in to 100% at any time with Control 1, Command 1 on a Mac or Control plus, Command plus uh, just to zoom in in steps. But what I'm going to do first is use this very handy little tool much underused. If you have rulers set on, and if you don't, then that's Control R or Command R, or go through the View menu. If you have rulers set on, you can then click and drag a line, a grid line, down to wherever you want it to be. Uh, if you get it not quite where you want it to be, then you need to have the four-way arrow selected up in the top left, and then you can hover on it and indeed move it to where you wish. So if I zoom in a few times now, and I'm just going to go Control plus a couple of times, say Command plus whatever else, I can see I've not quite placed it perfectly. But I'm not actually that worried about that, because that's going to help me just a little bit. So if I now scroll across the left of my image, what I'm looking to see is, is this gap between my grid line and my C stroke skyline equal? And you can see here that the answer pretty much is, yes, it is. And that's pretty obvious to me that we are now looking at very nearly a horizontal image. It's fractionally out just over here on the right. You can see it's just drifting a real tiny bit as we move across. And that's how useful this tool is. To us normally, it looks absolutely level. It's just a wee fraction out. Now to correct this, I've talked about this in previous videos. Uh, all we need to do is go into the uh, line tool and we could do a rotate. So hidden underneath the eyedropper, if we click on there, we have the rule tool, uh, not the line tool, I keep getting the two back to front. And I'm not going to do this perfectly, I'm just going to show you kind of what happens. So we don't need to even work out. Now this is clearly obviously going to be off. The whole point is to show how it works. So having decided that's where our points are, if we now go image, image rotate, and arbitrary, Photoshop will now rotate and make horizontal whatever angle this line has now been placed at, which I know for right now is utterly wrong. It's just to demonstrate that it works. So in this case, if I wanted to put the horizon back, then I merely go to my one side over here, drag across to where I think it should be horizontal over there, image, image rotate, arbitrary, and it will calculate the amount it wants to put it back to. So that's a real simple horizontal fix. There's no need for any horizons not to be horizontal. Now, of course, different lenses, as we know, have different effects. So leaving that one aside, I will close that one out of the way. And no, I don't want to change it, thank you. We'll go across to an image here. Well, I've already put the line in. And even from here, it should be quite obvious that we've got a bit of a discrepancy going on. But if I go in a couple of times with a Control Plus, Command Plus for the Mac, then I've got my nice line on the horizon there pesky bird that looks like a dust spot but really isn't and now if I move across to this side we can see it clearly dips down to the right and dips down to the other right Aha, the first right was a left either way you can see the problem now there's many many people will tell you that that's because the earth is curved whatever your beliefs are here's a little bit of science for you feel free to look it up there is an equation for working out how far you can see to the horizon, which if you're standing on the beach is, is very nice to know. 
Now, if you take an average person of sort of like five, seven, five, ten, something like that, and these are going to start in feet and inches because nautical terms do work in old uh, systems of their own. So we'll come back to that. And the equation is quite straightforward. You take the square root of the measurement in feet of the observer's eye above sea level. So let's say we've got eye level at nine foot because we've stood a little bit off the beach so we don't get wet feet. So we've managed to get our eyes nine feet above sea level. The square root of that is three. We then times that by 1.17 and that gives you the distance you can see in nautical miles. One nautical mile, by the way, is about 1.8 kilometers. And if you do a bit of up and down maths, you'll realize that from the standard human nine foot eye level across the beach, you can see about six and a half kilometers, which is actually quite a long way. It's about four ish miles. The human eye can see a, an arc, if you like, of approximately 65 ish degrees, plus or minus a bit of human error here and there. And that means, by a bit of a coincidence, your eye is capable of resolving something around a five kilometer width at horizon distance. When we take into account the diameter of the Earth and then we extrapolate that with the pi and we get to the circumference, we actually find that at that five kilometer distance, we are talking about a 0.01% difference. And to put that into simpler numbers, that means that you could, if your eyes were that good, over a five kilometer distance, spot 50 centimeters. Now, I don't know how good your eyes are, but mine aren't that good. So the science is, yes, we can in theory see a bit of curvature if we could see far enough, if the horizon was clear, if there were no clouds, if there was no distortion coming from the sea. But in reality, as photographers, the horizon should be flat. And if that's not bad enough, I quite often see images sent in for me where the horizon actually goes the other way and curves up at the edges, which clearly isn't ever going to work. So putting horizons right is a very simple question of using lens correction when you do your processing and just letting the software sort itself out and checking with a, a nicely straight down line. So we'll close those two down as well. We've dealt with the horizons. And I'll get rid of that one out of the way, and we'll get rid of this one out of the way, neither of which I wish to save. Now let's look at an image where we know something should be horizontal, but we have no horizon to play with. And if we've got a nice building, something that we know should be vertical, then that's easy to do. And I've looked at perspective cropping and correction in a previous video. But this image here, now we know that water is flat. That's one of the fundamental things that we use spirit levels on the basis. The water goes flat, the bubble sits at the top, you've got your horizon, or your horizontal. If we have a water reflection, and we do in this image, it's quite easy to check. And the way we can check this, quite frankly, is to see if the top matches the bottom. And if it does, it's horizontal. Now, we showed you earlier on that we can drag a grid line across from the top. We can, of course, also drag a grid line across from the left. And if I drag my grid line across, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit before I do that. Voila. If I now grab a grid line from the left and drag it across and choose some point in the image, and I'm going to choose the center of this badge, so I'm actually looking up here, then we would reasonably expect the center of the badge to be lined up. And let's just go for the edge. That makes it a little bit easier to spot. So I'm now going to line my cursor up there. So at the top here, if I zoom in some more, you can see I've got just at the very edge of that number 22. If I want to be more precise, I can go to my crosshairs and I can drag that across so I'm really happy with it. So let's just move that just a wee bit there. Uh, do it again. That's what you can be really picky about it all. If you find, by the way, this goes in snap grids, which this is at the moment. Uh, if you zoom in some more, that will generally give you a little bit more tolerance. So if I just go and get that where I want it to be. Uh, you can also, by the way, uh, type values in for this in the top menu bar if you wish. 
So I've now got a grid line that's running very, very tightly down this side of that number 22, which will of course be upside down in the water. But if I now follow that line down, you can clearly see that that does not indeed line up. So this image doesn't look like it's much off. Uh, control 0, Command 0 will reset that for us. But it's pretty obvious to see in just a few clicks and zooms, of course, that it is so. And if we correct the image, and we then go and do the same and drag one across, and let's do zoom in some more. Do, 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 do. Uh, you can actually start to see how easy it is to check for a vertical. So if we've got a flat enough C or flat enough reflective surface, then it's quite easy to check for verticals as well. And you can see that's not too bad, a fraction out still. And as ever, if you want to correct it, then we can use that adjustment tool. So I'll go back to one that's a little bit off. Uh, if you don't want these grid lines on anymore, by the way, because you can have as many of these on the screen as you want, you can fill the screen with a, a vast collection of them, uh, which is something I did on the lens ball tutorial. You can either go view and clear them, uh, so clear guides, or you can just drag them back off to the ruler and, and they disappear. So if I now want to make this image vertical, relying on the reflection, all I need to do is zoom into the point where I can get as much detail as I can. So I need to be able to see the top and the bottom because those are the two points I'm going to use. I go over to the eyedropper tool, which because I've already selected currently is the ruler tool. And if I now go in and set my corner right at the very edge of that and set my other corner right at the very edge of that and do an image, image rotation, arbitrary, Photoshop's detected a 1.19 degree. It's already worked out that it's going counterclockwise. I just go OK, and job is a fish. Drag the grid line across, and you will see that this is absolutely bang on. So that's how easy it is to use the correction tools within Photoshop to make sure you get either horizontals or verticals. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to look at the science of whether the sea is flat and whether you can see the curve or not, feel free. It's all over the internet. But in the meantime, take photos, enjoy photos, and stay safe.